Hanyoung, and welcome to Howley Juku, starring Brandon Cooper and myself, Petey Ray. This is episode 21, Shindong's Pockets. Enjoy! <laughs> Buenos nachos, amigos. Welcome to another fine episode of Howley Juku. I am PD Rave, your man with no plan. Here with me, as always, is Brandon Cooper, aka King Cass. How you doing, Cass? I am doing the do. Do the do, the do the do. Yeah, make it do what it do. Yeah. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are gathered once again to talk East Asian pop culture with each other uh, on this a little thing, a little adventure we go to together. Uh, of course, we always start off with checking in with each other about some music that we've been listening to this week, uh, whatever we've been want to feature. Cass, what have you been listening to this week? Not a lot. It was actually a struggle for me this week, just because this week has been kind of a whirlwind. Uh, my mom's birthday, planning all these trips, uh, the upcoming conventions, and all these other things. So I just kind of, I just kind of scrounged things together that uh, I like to hear every once in a while. So I went with uh, Kung Gary's uh, new joint Zoltamola because I don't, I don't give a fuck right now. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, new song from from Gary and uh, the guys over at Lee Song, and you know this is his little solo mini album that he's been putting together. Um, so, you know, I couldn't think of anything, Cause so I just went know. with that. Chotomora. right? <laughs> um, the next song I went with was FX a Toy from uh, the Pink album. Um, a nice fun song. It, it's it's always nice when this song comes on your playlist and and you can hear it and you have it and it's you know just one of those songs that you kind of listen to um yeah and that's pretty much it like that you know that's what it was like it's just as it says it is one of those fun yeah. songs that when it comes on your playlist yeah it's a fun it's album it's fun. one of those really cool album tracks that they have off of that pink uh pink tape album it's a really cool track yep um, my last song for this week from me was, uh, M Black's Mona Lisa, um, classic M Black song, one of their more popular songs, um, which is the reason I went with it. Cause like I said, it was just like kind of what I could kind of scrounge together at the last minute of, of things that I was thinking of. Um, and that was just kind of one, one of the ones that just kind of popped into my head. Yeah. And, and it, you know, it recreates that moment when I asked you to do a podcast with me, I said, Kaz, let's do a podcast together. Baby, please say yes. Please say yes. Don't say no. Mona <laughs> Kaza. Uh, yeah. Gotta love them, Black. Love them. Yep. Death. And Black Rocks. Uh, yeah, some great uh, tracks. Um, I, I have, I, I like you. I haven't really been listening to a whole heck of a lot. I've just been spending my week anticipating more than actually listening. Just because I know we'll talk about it in the headlines, just some of the stuff coming up. But I did pick a few tracks that did catch my attention this week. Uh, revisit, of course, Girls' Generation, uh, a classic Girls' Generation track in Hoot. And I picked it, I picked this song for a couple of reasons. One, uh, because it wasn't one that was necessarily always, I mean, I knew about it, but it wasn't always on my radar or one that I listened to often, but it caught my attention this week just from seeing, I think I'm seeing it on Reddit. And two, because the title of the song in its original Korean looks like a little man with a cowboy hat on it. So mm -hmm. I think, I think that's a, that's a wonderful thing. And you can see it right there. Little man with a cowboy hat on it. Yep. Yeah. Seen yesterday. Gotta love him. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but moving on to, uh, another song that, uh, I, all right. So it caught my attention, not because I, I necessarily was jamming to it for any particular reason, but, um, Wonder Girls is a thing that was, is, is a group that had, had no, no exist and no, well, <laughs> existed. <laughs> I know existed, uh, for a while and I know it's a big deal. Um, and one of the things somebody posted on, on the K-pop subreddit was the kind of dance version to their, uh, what was supposed to be their American breakthrough effort, uh, the single Like Money. Uh, and they posted, what they posted was, all right, here's the HD dance version without Akon, which told me, wait, Wonder Girls did a song 
with Akon. <laughs> And this is the version without it. Uh, so I watched the video and, you know, I, I, I absorbed it, you know, and, it, it, and then, of course, I watched the original with uh, Akon as well. And it, it, it's interesting to observe something that I didn't go through. And, and I think that this is a common theme for me in my journey through K-pop, observing the remnants of of all the uh the happenings that happened before I got into K-pop it's like uh I'm walking into the aftermath of so many things like the aftermath of Wonder Girls and their and JYP's failed effort into making them big in America uh and uh, this is like the remnants of that their song with Akon in which they they have a song and a video where they're uh cyber robot women from Korea that are here to take over America or something. <laughs> You're from an, a foreign land, and they're gonna uh, take over our our world with dance and Akon, and uh, and then the song is just a, a, and then the song is just kind of a serviceable pop song, you know. Mm-hmm. And like the the main thing that it being in English and it having Akon on it is that it made it too real and too much like I'm just listening to pop music where when I'm listening to just poppy, like the poppiest of poppy K-pop music, I kind of am just indulging myself into this, into this music. But the fact that I don't understand the lyrics and I'm just, you know, jamming to it kind of, kind of, I don't know, gets me, gives me a disconnect and kind of, uh, that I, that I let myself have. But, once it's like, all right, it's in English. It's got Akon rapping in the middle of it. Now I'm just listening to pop music. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, essentially. I mean, I mean, essentially. I mean, yeah. And all this is unfair. It is at the end of the day, you know, yeah. I admit it's uh, unfair, but it's just kind of a weird feeling. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Does, does that make sense? No, I mean, I, I, I understand it. I used to have it, but then I, I let go of that, that sense of of that a while ago because i was like at the same i was like at the end of the day it is just pop music it is yeah. just pop music it's just in a different language yeah um and it has a different slight appeal to God it damn, but it's the, it's face. it's the same type of songs you know what i'm saying yeah like there's nothing inherently different about what these songs are compared to a britney spears song or anything like that you know yeah um so I yeah. gave you know I gave up on that that thought process that like oh this is something different and or something more, yeah. um, and I and, and 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 I think yeah I've always kind of had that mentality even coming into K-pop like you know what I'm just gonna enjoy it because it's pop music but I think it's just a weird feeling <laughs> listening to this no but yeah it, it is a weird feeling yeah it's a weird feeling listening to like this in English language plus it, it's you know. It's another like sad failed attempt at this this brass ring that JYP and YG have been reaching for this lauded supposed brass ring that they need to achieve, which is breaking into the American market. And like uh, one of the things that a- 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 the guys at Asian Junkie says, like you know, as far as K-pop is concerned, he's like fuck America. <laughs> Like, that's not your market. Just stop trying to reach for that imaginary brass ring. Like, like, uh, and we'll talk about a little bit about when it comes to like crayon pop and, and the headlines, but like, they, they go for this and like, after this, after this, pretty much the things that happened directly after this release were the dismantling and downfall of Wonder Girls. And now Wonder Girls pretty much doesn't exist, you know? Uh, Sunye, uh, Sunye is going to Haiti for five years. <laughs> and, but what, what, Sunye is going to Haiti for five years to do missionary work. And, uh, also, uh, JYP says that doesn't mean that Wonder Girls is disbanding. He says she's still in the group and they're not disbanding. I mean, she's going to Haiti for five years, but they're not disbanding. Okay. <laughs> And all I can think is JYP. It's okay. It's okay, JYP. Just just go back in the recording studio. It's okay. Good boy. Just 
I, I, it's nice that you think that. It's nice. It's nice that you think it's like <sighs> fucking JYP. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, uh, and it's just it, fascinating to see the remnants of all this after you know re- aftermath. Uh, but moving on to something a little less uh ranty about JYP because. We could go on and on about ranting about JYP. <laughs> uh, just a, a couple of r- a random cool uh, tracks. Uh, Lim Kim, I've been I've been re-listening to Lim Kim's album, you know, because I have it and it's well, it's over that way. I uh, have it physically and I have it in my iTunes and I have it on my phone. And I've been uh, listening to uh, or I I wanted to. Sh- the, uh, share the video for like an acoustic live version of the English version of uh, Urban Green, uh, which is a really cool little track on uh, at the end of uh, well at the, in the middle and again at the end of the English it, the English version is at the end of the album, um, and it's a really cool mellow song that I dig from her. It really works with her vocals um, in both the Korean and English version, and I. I like it. it. It's, it's very, I, 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 for some reason, it makes me think of like Sarah Bareilles <laughs> in a sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and it's just, I don't know. I dig it. It's really cool and mellow, cool song to chill to. Uh, and I like, I like Liam Kim. And I, I, that album is just a really cool album to me. Yeah. You've been, you've been talking about Liam Kim for a while and like, yeah. You've been you've been kind of eyeing to get this album talked about more and more, so yeah, um, this is good. Yeah. Uh, also, a uh, random other uh, as I let people peek into the docs for a second there. Uh, <laughs> uh, random other thing that I, I almost forgot for a second, but a random little uh, new d- uh, rookie hip hop group called um- Ugly Bumpkin. Uh, these three okay. wacky kids. Uh, with the song from yesterday and it's just this kind of fun adorable uh song about a like and a girl and and they 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 just kind of do this fun video where they're wandering around a shopping a, a, a supermarket with the the little fat kid uh in the group and sitting in the shopping cart rapping you know <laughs> And uh-huh. it's just this fun video and this fun song that kind of came out of nowhere that I saw uh, on, I think on Kyle Forum is where I saw it first, or either Kyle Forum or, or on the K-pop subreddit. And I just yeah. kind of dug it. Uh, did, did, are, you, are you are you checking it out now? Are you checking this video? Off? Yeah, I, I, I just uh, I, I just opened it up and I'm kind of skipping through it and checking it out. Yeah. Uh, you, oh, okay. You know what? I, I I did see this on the Reddit the other day, but I, I I meant to go back to the Reddit last night and got like so sidetracked. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'll have to kind of uh, understand that 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 the little the little fat kid has has no neck and very big hands. <laughs> You're gonna have to accept that because it. And once you accept that, it's just a fun song. It's a really cool song. And I hope you all yeah. check it out. And I, I hope for good things. I was like uh, checking out new rookie groups, and they do some. They do something cool, uh, even slightly cool, right off the bat. It makes me want to see them grow, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, but that is all. For wait, hey, wait, hold on. What? Year of the hip hop. Anytime we do hip hop, I gotta, I gotta say, year of the rapper. Year of the hip hop. Year of the rapper. <laughs> Hashtag year of the rapper. Right, yes. um, we can get that trending and shit. Uh, but yeah, that's all for what we've been listening to this week. Uh, now we're yep. gonna get into headlines. So come on back. Pew. Pew. All right, we're back with a look at the headlines in K-pop, and of course, me being the pop jushi that I am, I'm gonna start with the big headline of this week, which was. Crayon Pop is has been tapped to open for Lady Gaga into uh for part of her North America tour. I'm part of her, yeah, tour. Mm-hmm. The Art Rave Art Pop Festival. I'm I'm mint, I'm messing up my words because I'm I'm hyped. I'm hyped. It's <laughs> fuck. Thuggy on Pop coming for your cash, homie. 
Yeah. Thug you and Pop gonna slay them bitches. Uh, left and right. What? Uh, okay. Uh, but anyways, uh, <laughs> Cramp and, 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 but legitimately, this is pretty exciting that Cramp Pop is going to get a, a little bit of exposure. Uh, the, in all reality, this is not going to break them into America. Like I said before, it's just, that's the brass ring. That's not quite, uh, the, the, that's not quite the realistic goal. Uh, but what it is going to be cool for is it's going to get some new fans. It, they're going to be able to media play this back home. They're going to be able to say, it, kind of play this around and say, hey, yo, we went to America and toured. We played the Staples Center, two, Staples Center two nights in a row. Like we, you know, uh, you know, we toured North America with Lady Gaga and we, they're going to be able to do that. And, but most importantly, they're going to be rolling in that money, uh, making it rain like the thugs that they are. Uh, I, I, what, what, what did, what are your initial thoughts of just this as, as a, as a concept? Um, it's interesting. It's, it's nice in the, in the world music view to like kind of break down. <laughs> I don't know. The freaking, you, you know what thing just popped into my head, don't you? <laughs> what? Break the walls down. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Ugh, Triple H. Get out of no, my that was, that was Chris um, Jericho. Oh, was it Chris? Oh, it was Chris Jericho. Was Come it? on, baby. Um But that you know that just popped into my head. Um to break down kind of these barriers of the international music waters and like um kind of show other acts because you know generally open acts are kind of these usually smaller american groups that everyone hasn't really heard of you know for for bigger people like this you know um but it's it's interesting to do something different and i know lady gaga has to be the person that does something so different guys oh my god (laughs) um you know um yeah Yeah. and just exciting it's gonna be exciting because the, I mean, just the dates. They're gonna they're gonna be able to play Atlantic City, Bo- Atlantic City, Boston. They're gonna do the uh, they're gonna do Chicago, San Antonio. They're gonna play Vegas, I believe, at the MGM Grand. Uh, and like I said, they're gonna uh, play the Staples Center two nights in a row. Like they're gonna play two nights at the Staples Center, and even just that, like you can, no matter what if this does as far as their exposure here in the states. The fact that they can just use that as like a laurel leaf thing, like, hey, we played the Staples Center two nights in a row, like on the big stage in front of a you know an arena audience, like we did that, like that's just really cool. Um, and of course, the 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 preparations are being made. Uh, uh, the Cram Pop Slave Subs, I don't know where they got it from, but. Uh, they have already started, uh, getting people prepared in America because this is going to be the Crayon Pop's first American foray. So they're getting people, uh, started getting ready to learn the fan chants because there's a, a, it's a very important that you learn the fan chants. Uh, they put up the tutorials with the songs so you can go full on Pop Jushi and, uh, get yourself ready, you know. You gotta learn your cues, gotta know when to come in, you know, uh, your proper, you know, the, the, the sequences, you know, gotta learn when you're supposed to chant the real names, when you're supposed to chant the, the stage names, you know, uh, and you, know, you gotta get yourself ready so you can do it with your fullest enthusiasm. And I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, in, in the fan chant, uh, yeah, but it, yeah, this is fun. Like, you know, getting people ready for doing the fan chants, uh, getting people, uh, you know, like, uh, the, the fact that they're gonna get a little bit of exposure is really cool. And, and they're gonna be performing new songs because they're about to release their, their, their new material. Uh, they, they just released a teaser for the, the new music video. Ay. <laughs> Ay. <laughs> Ay. Uh, and it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna feature that thing that they've been teasing, the, the farm girl look. Uh, but also mix it apparently with some modern life look, modern urban life, uh, uh, imagery. I don't know. It, it okay. looks fascinating. It looks fascinating, uh, and interesting. 
to say the least. Uh, but uh, I, I've just typed about Crayon Pop, and uh, even even uh, established acts like uh, Orange Caramel are hyped about Crayon Pop, because uh, you know they said you know we're thankful to you know that, that we're also supportive of Crayon Pop. It's good to see a variety of different girl groups. So that you know we're gonna pump into each other. We're also Crayon Pop fans. It's like it's good to have them on board, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's cool. And I also agree with Asian Junkie that Orange Caramel and Crayon Pop should collab, because <laughs> that would be I would be awesome. That Do that collabo, yeah, on that collabo tip, uh, yeah. You got uh, one more. Uh, did you talk about the 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 uh, teaser for the new? Yeah, I talked about the teaser. Yeah, it's gonna like I said, it's gonna be interesting. They 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 showed a few moments of the music video mm-hmm. and the club scene and all the crazy dancing and a little bit of the song. I'm, I'm, I, I kind of like the song. The, 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 the instrumentation is a little, uh, odd. So I'm going to have to wait to see how it's utilized in the scope of the song. Like I said, it, I think I said before, it's the guy that, uh, put that, uh, is responsible for Bing Bing and Dancing Queen, which mm-hmm. I think are fantastic songs. And, uh, if, if those are any indication, uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a really cool song. Hopefully. Hopefully. I have hopes. I have high hopes. I got high hopes. Um, but, uh, hopefully, you know, good things. Uh, speaking of orange caramel, orange caramel, um, this is a weird thing. KBS has ruled that or- they have banned orange caramel's Catalina music video because they've ruled okay. that uh, they've made it appro- inappropriate for broadcasting because they've ruled that the scene they have a scene that depicts a disregard for human life uh they say specifically in where is they, it the is it the scene where they're wrapped in plastic wrapped in plastic <laughs> yeah they're dressed up as mermaids being trapped in wrapping and then also as pieces of sushi on rice and they've said that that disregards human life <laughs> oh, KBS world. KBS. <laughs> just I, w- I want to meet the guy who works in that front office because this is a he, he's trolling. He's trolling. trolling. He be trolling. He, he ha- they, they have to be like the, at this point. A- they just have to be. How how you would dis- besmirch the perfection that is orange caramel? I have no idea. Let alone consider this. I, it's just okay. Like how it can be perceived as anything other than silly to me is is beyond me. Like uh, with the 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 censoring and the uh, and, and this is kind of the things that these are the okay. And and also this these are the kind of headlines. That get leaked out to uh, the outside world and get read uh-huh. and, and and read and interpreted as oh Korea you so crazy and like yeah. that's what people will think of it and they need to understand that like people will read this headline is like man them Koreans like that's what they're gonna think and that's gonna be the perception internationally uh, so y'all need to stop being so silly. Stop being so silly. Um, uh, KBS. All right, moving on. So something a little more cool. Um, we have uh, finally the debut of uh, Lee Michelle, E. Michelle, or Michelle Lee. Uh, somebody that I, are you? Uh, are you familiar with uh, E. Michelle or Michelle Lee and her I've, deal? I've never actually. Um, I've never actually like listened to anything of her stuff, but I know of her. I know of like the whole kind of stuff she went through, kind of uh, with the uh, what is it called? What is it K-pop called? K pop star. star. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, yeah. how that show was kind of the the understanding that those kind of american idol type shows um 
mean a lot more in other places. Like, yeah. they mean a lot more in Korea and kind of in some of these other places where people actually go on those shows, go through that process, and then become popular singers. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And not just the person that won American Idol, not just the person that won K-pop star, you know? Like, they actually go on to have, or so far, go yeah. on to have legitimate careers as yeah. singers, you know? Because, I mean, there are some of the people that from American Idol that you could kind of say have had legitimate singing careers, mm -hmm. like Kelly Clarkson or, you know, other people, but a lot of them kind of get left in the dust as, oh, that was the person that won American Idol and yeah. kind of known as nothing more but that. Um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, for for those uninitiated, her her ordeal uh, was was on K-pop star. Her ordeal, um, what uh, her journey began with was appearing on K-pop star and basically kind of kicking ass and blowing everybody uh, away and d performing phenomenally week in week out. Uh, from from all accounts, I haven't seen it personally, but from all accounts, she performed a, a incredibly week in and week out. Uh, but she didn't really get the votes. Like she was always up for like elimination. She was always like close to being eliminated or she was like low on the rankings. And even b below people that were evidently inferior to her in talent, like random B boys and like, uh, other, you know, just, uh, other people that, and, and, and to the point where when she finally was eliminated from the show, uh, JYP kind of went off <laughs> on like Korea. Like y'all are racist. Like more, he said it a lot more eloquently and he actually did a really good job of like, like uh, uh, speaking to the truth. But basically he said like, y'all are racist, man. <laughs> like look at this girl. And it's like, uh, and that, that kind of fueled her journey. And then. All right. After the show, all right. She gets signed to YG. <laughs> mm -hmm. She gets signed with the YG. She's uh, they're prepping her to debut in a group called Sue Pearls uh, alongside E High Lee High, uh, who is you know a, a popular singer now. Uh, it was going to be a group, but then they decided, well, you know what? We like her. Uh, Y'all just buy. <laughs> like they they pick Lee High to kind of debut as a solo singer, and they kind of drop everyone else. Including Michelle Lee. And mm -hmm. of course, people were upset. <laughs> people weren't happy. Uh, but looking at it now, it looks like she's gonna, she got a fresh start with a new label. Uh, she's, they're putting her up and put, positioning her to be a ballad singer. And she now has her debut. And the song is good. It, it, it is what it exactly needs to be. It's a very solid ballad that exhibits her talent. Uh, and the, the market over there eats that shit up, you know, and th that's exactly what she needs to be. It's, she's positioning herself to be, uh, considered for OSTs and, and things like that. So, she, the, and that's good. So the song is there, you know, the way, the style of what she's doing is that. Plus, the video kind of touches on the the whole feeling of like being who she is. And for those that aren't aware, I, I didn't I didn't say this. Michelle Lee is a uh, is uh, what you would call Blasian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, uh, you know the classic Blasian combo: uh, African American father, Asian uh, Korean mother. Uh, but she was born and, and raised in Korea, uh, and I believe she didn't really know her dad. Uh, so it's like, she, she's Korean. Like she was born and raised in Korea. She speaks Korean and, you know, not more than all way more than she spoke English in any way. Uh, she's Korean, but she's also of, of a darker skin complexion. Like she's Blasian that she's very obviously, uh, you know, the, 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 yeah. the features are undeniable, but, uh, and, and she, she, they use this video to really kind of convey the emotions of being, you know, because she, they, they act, they get this little kid who is of similar background and kind of show the, that, that those emotions, those feelings through the little kid. And I think do a good job. I think some of it is a little on the nose, but I think the way that they're feeling and the way they're experiencing, I think they needed it to be on the nose, but I don't know. Did, did you get a chance to see the, the video? Yeah, I, I looked through it. it. 
there was it was a lot of confusion in the beginning of the video and in the end of the video but the middle made a lot of sense the middle made a lot of sense and i was like can i just have that part yeah like, can you take out the beginning and the end and just give me just that and i'm i'm that's awesome like if you just give me the middle and the end part yeah. hell yeah 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 and like and even just like at the moment where the the the, the kid and, and her are looking at each other like yeah we're all right like we're all right yeah look at I was like, wait, wasn't the kid supposed to represent you? What the f- What? <laughs> it's, it's, Where does the white room come from? Where did the white room come from? <laughs> look, look, no, do you remember? Have you, have you seen Doctor Who? <laughs> <laughs> you know how they said that you can't meet yourself in the past or in another timeline right. or a third of the world would be, dis- would be destroyed? That's what happened. They met each other at different timelines. And then a third of the world was destroyed, and all that's left is whiteness. And they're all standing in the whiteness that is left behind. <sighs> Doctor Who Rift. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was just a really cool video. And I think, and uh, I linked to the Asian Junkie article, and they pointed out, like, chances are if she would have stayed at YG, she would have probably been completely misused <laughs> like they probably honestly knowing yg she would have been made a rapper like she would have like uh they would have used her to kind of further like do the, the appropriating of like whatever you know uh he wants to do as far as like pretending you know their hood and shit uh so i think the fact that she has a label now that just lets her use her vocal abilities to be a ballad singer, a super talented ballad singer is going to be a lot better for her career. Yeah. Definitely domestically. Yeah. 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 Ah, it's um, good. I mean, yeah, she's a really good singer. Like, um, I would, I would love and want to kind of see more good stuff from her, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, then that that will be kind of the the telltale part because yeah. you can be a good singer, but that doesn't necessarily mean you you're ever gonna get good songs. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because yeah. like, good singer does not always equate good songwriter. Good songwriter does not always equate good singer. You know what I'm saying? And it yeah. all kind of at the end of the day depends on how how you're paired and who you're paired with and who you work with and yeah. and the vocals and the beat and how the music is mixed and like kind of all these things at the end of the day is what really 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 goes to say whether or not you can be an entertainer. Because any like there are a lot of people who are good singers. It just doesn't mean they can be entertainers yeah um yeah you know. so, so uh-huh. that's going to be the next step for her she had a good debut yeah it's a good debut but then we're going to have to see the next step the next song mm-hmm. once she's going to you know she'll go through this promotion cycle and then the next step the next release right uh if she does get that ost if she does get you know those kind of next uh good ballads uh i i am going to plan on checking out like the both the songs on this single, check out the, the other one, because I think the other, supposedly the other one speaks more to her experience on K-pop Star, so I'm going to check that out, but yeah. hopefully hopefully good things uh, with her. And you know what? Good thing that... It, it, it turns out to be a good thing that she was dropped by, by YG. <laughs> Generally, yeah. <laughs> All right. But moving on to something a little bit, a little more crazy, because uh, apparently SM Entertainment SM Entertainment, allegedly subject of tax evasion investigation. <laughs> okay, yeah, continue, please. Yes. Right. Um, cause apparently, okay, so apparently, and I'm going to read just, uh, apparently this involves tens of millions of dollars. Um, and the, I'm going to read it like this. It's Segye stated that according to insiders of the National Tax Service, 30 personnel were sent out to the SM Entertainment headquarters to collect various documents and records they may provide evidence of tax evasion. The media outlet states that rather than giving the agency a 10-day notice ahead of time, 
which is what happens in the case of regular routine checkups, the National Tax Service did not give the notice until day of, as this was being treated as a special investigation. And they wanted to make sure that there was no time for the agency to tamper or destroy evidence. They wanted to make sure nobody was shredding shit. <laughs> like, like they, like, they give them notice, they know it's like, all right. Get the shredders out. <laughs> well, okay. All right, let's put that in there. Oh, wait, what is this? Uh, oh, no, put that in there. Put that in there. <laughs> like, hey, you stop that right now. No, no. Oh, God. Shred it all. <laughs> Burn it. Um, 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 they start eating stuff. Like, right. The, the shredder's not for working fast enough. Eat it. Eat it. <laughs> Oh God! And I I didn't even read that paragraph until now, and I I almost busted out laughing just knowing that there were thirty guys storming SM's offices like, "Yo, we come for them documents!" Like <laughs> when they're just practicing their dancing, like, Ugh. "Hey, what are you doing? Stop dancing! We're all okay. Dancing? All right, we're writing that down. Did that? Did that? Uh, this is taxable." Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell? Like, God yeah. damn it! Oh, uh, you, can you imagine the confused look on on all the members of Girls' Generation? And like, Amber's just sitting there, like, "What's going on?" <laughs> Freaked out. Uh, Chris was just running around, all scared. You know, uh, uh, you know, Taeyeon's just uh, doing her craziness. Jessica's just completely oblivious. Yuri's probably fast asleep. Because <laughs> your sleeps anywhere, uh, you know it's just who yeah. knows. Like there's like super junior members just scattered around, you know, <laughs> hiding things. That that's where that's whose pockets they need to check. It's the goddamn super junior members because th- some of those motherfuckers have way too much money, while as other ones not so much for some reason. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> there's definitely something worth looking at. Uh, yeah, it, this is all insane and of course it's like the and and that's not the only news that sm has this week they're also like making mac they were making machinations uh including naming kanta and boa as non-registered uh-huh. directors and i don't know how related these things are or what they have to do with each other or if they have nothing to do with each other but they were it, it's like what happened over at sm <laughs> like whoa like things blowing up over an SM, like like nobody's business. Uh it's like and and it goes to show you, you know what? It's better that you just pay your taxes. <laughs> just do it, because then you yeah. don't end up being like Wesley Snipes. Like nobody wants to be Wesley Snipes. No, at least not now. <laughs> I don't know. What, what 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 impression does this leave you? Uh, of these? I don't. It just is, is these things that happen. Like how many fucking record labels has that happened to here in America? You know what I'm Probably, saying? Like yeah. you 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 get these these companies that spring up because yeah, they're really good at one thing. Does not mean they're good at the business part. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like you get these companies that rise up from from guys who are basically of nothing who. Are, understand how to put music together how to get those kind of people together to do said kind of music and do all these other kind of things and yeah they make a lot of money and then you give them different tax forms that aren't a w-2 and they're like "Hmm." give them give them five thousand dollars i don't know what the fuck i don't know what they want (laughs) you know and then at the end of the day you're like uh do you not have accountants like what the fuck that got? What does accountant got to do with music? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I and ain't then... account nothing. <laughs> I'm making music. <laughs> You're like, well, now you owe us thirty million dollars. Oh, okay, we're gonna hire four accountants. <laughs> 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 no, that's that's not how you solve this issue. <laughs> <laughs> so you get one good yeah. accountant, or at least in an office, yeah. Uh, right. And also, it's you know the machinations of uh, corporations trying to save themselves. A little money, uh, try to yeah. you know keep themselves out, uh, keep themselves lush with cash. Probably hiding yeah. that money somewhere in a place where y'all can get it. 
I think I know who I told you. It's a super. It's like it's like pick that pocket. If you if you pick the right pocket, you'll find your money. Yes. It's in one of these fifty super junior members' pockets. I, Which I, one I, will it be? I will find also, out after this commercial break. Uh, my my can't my uh my money is on uh the underside of Shin Dong's gut. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I don't even understand if anyone out there understands how hard I'm shaking my head, but <laughs> that's the way it is. Yes, because <laughs> because because that motherfucker, like everybody else, be like, oh, you know, I don't know, you know, like like maybe you know, hmm, we could do Super Junior again. Jin Dong's like, bitch, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> like mm-hmm. you're like, hmm, why? Hmm. Why right. in particular? <laughs> like, like Super Junior M is out busy come putting together their comeback. They're gonna, they've just released their music video, which I might bring up next week because I've missed out on it. Uh, yeah. But Super Junior M is still working hard. You know, you got, uh, Kyo, uh, Kyo Hyun, uh, Kyo Hyun, you know, he's still hustling uh, on the variety sh- circuit. Shindong, he, he's got Beatles code. And that's about it. Like, I think that's it. Like, <laughs> and like, he hosts like a thing here and there. I think we're going to have to, we're going to have to, to ask some. That questions. motherfucker just shows up and is like, give me a microphone. What up? What am I doing? What, what is this? Oh, this is a, a showcase. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, some cute cards. Introducing, introducing an act. Come on here and sing. <laughs> <laughs> play the siren. Wait, the the fuck, fuck is play the siren shit? What the <laughs> <laughs> that girl cute though. <laughs> I love this. I love this non give a fuck version of Shin Dong that we've created. I, yes. I I accept it. It's it's a good, it's a great new character. Like right, he just shows up on TV and he's just like, you're like UJ Salk is like, but uh, Shin Dong. Everybody's like, yeah, I'm hosting this week. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yep. Shindong. What show is this? <laughs> and, you know, it's like, it's like, it's a, uh, it's Anyang ha- Haseyo. It's like Anyang well, Haseyo to you, but what show is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, but no, for real. Korean government check Shindong's pockets. Shin. I ain't snitching. I'm just saying. Those are some pockets you could check. <laughs> If you if you started an inquisition of checking pockets and you had to check anyone's pockets first, I know you probably want to check Jessica's pockets, you greedy old nasty old man. But no, <laughs> check Shindung's pockets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh God, I think that 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 exhausts all of our uh, headlines uh, for today. I think. Uh, the only thing we didn't get to touch on is the whole Boa is a director. I think, uh, that puts her in a position to further kind of position herself as the Wait, heir okay. apparent. Those are some more goddamn pockets over at SM. Yeah. There's like, okay. those are the, at Shindong, then go check Boa. Cause, you know, right. she is, she has her hands on all, in all the pots down there. You know that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Cause she just be getting promotions out of nowhere. <laughs> OSTs left and right, like nothing. Like, you know what? This week I'm the CEO. <laughs> like, wait, who announced this? Oh, buy Boa for Boa. <laughs> yeah, she is. I'm the coming out with a new album. Yes. Just, just in old Sanskrit. Yeah. Like, when did you learn Sanskrit? Yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> like, God damn it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She'll eat you up. Yum yum. <laughs> oh, oh, another thing, another thing to note. Uh we didn't put it in here, but but if you're if you're a follower of the What's Up, uh you should have seen the What's Up happiness video uh where they kind of make their own version of Pharrell's happy uh, the, video. The, the original kinda. which I haven't seen, so, but I, I will sp- I will spend a good, you know, several minutes just staring at the girls at What's Up walking down the street. Yeah. I ain't no thing. <laughs> like, I will just do that. <laughs> it, it's fun, and I, I kind of like this whole this whole kind of thing or whatever. It's a, it's a bit hippie-ish. Um, not that there's necessarily anything wrong with that, if you're a hippie, I guess. 
you know, promote happiness. Yeah. Um, but yeah. don't don't be mad at me when I promote anger and disparity. Also, not us booty though. Yeah. Yeah. Something mm-hmm. else. Something else other than that, creating that, anger. That's no, that's just how you end the show. Not as booty. Yeah, exactly. All right. That is Halle Juku for the day. We have no Halle Juku talk segment, but we will be back next week to talk some movies. Talk a couple movies. Yeah. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, but that Definitely. is it for this week at uh, Halle Juku. Kaz, you got anything uh-huh. going on in your world? Um, just the constant, uh, move this box over here, see how that looks. If it needs more desks, website where you'll be able to find all the things soon. But for right now, it's about that me slash King Kaz, as my cat tells you, right? Yeah. About that me slash King Kaz. For I am telling them now, not your turn. Um, about that me slash King Kaz for all the things King Kaz, Twitter, Facebook whatever else happens to be on there photos maybe well links to photos it's, it's a card it's a digital card it's me handing you my digital business card yeah. and then you go and you look at the other things yeah god damn it yes uh of course you can follow him there i uh, i'm at pd rave at about me at twitter everywhere on the internet because i'm the only pd rave you, you'll ever know uh you can follow the show at Hallyu juku just like it's for, for the video uh, watchers, it's right there. The name's right there. You, it's also halijuku.com. If that is hard to remember, you need something easier to share to your friends. I created kpoppodcast.com. Uh, share that with your friends. Uh, check out all the episodes on the website, rebelli.net for this and other shows, including Fanny Pack Wrestling Podcast and Record Breakers. Uh, this week on Record Breakers, uh, we're going to be talking about We Are the Union. Drew gave us another ska album. Oh, well, <laughs> shocking! <laughs> That's surprising. Yeah, uh, but of course, we, you check that out. Of course, every Tuesday you can check that out. Uh, Rolly down it, iTunes, Stitcher. I'm rambling. Until next time, hasta los huevos. Fighting. Good. And y'all. <laughs>